You don't always need a massive, detailed house in order to make something look good. In today's video, I want to show you how we can use all of the natural blocks such as leaves, vines, crops, flowers, to make an ordinary shack look really different and unique. So let's start by making the simple shack, and it should be noted that this build may not look particularly attractive until we get to the nature part, which is the whole point of this video. So I started by making a rather simple shape on the floor, a rectangle with an extra extension on the front. These are going to make up the two portions of this build. I then add a very simple frame at the corners, as we usually do, and fill in the rest of the wall with my favourite block, spruce wood. Once we've done that, we can then start moving on to shaping the build. It must be noted that you need to think about the shape of the build before you do the layout. Try and visualise what you're trying to make. I'm only going for a very small build today because I just want to demonstrate how we can make this look more natural. On the front extension, I then take away the top layer and add a slab incline as a roof to indicate where our entrance is going to be. This is going to slope inwards because we want it to accentuate what we're going to do next, which is on the second half, the larger rectangle, add a second story on top of the wall. We're going to make sure that we leave a ledge between the current ones, and we can accentuate that by adding the slabs just to highlight it. It also curves downward, again to give it a bit of shape. If everything is straight on a build, it tends to look a little bit rigid, and of course I mean that in an artistic sense buildings don't move. So by adding those ledges we can use those later on to add a lot of the garden effects that we're going to be putting on. We need to leave ourselves some space in order to do that. So we're then going to fill in the rest of the wall and I actually made a mistake as you can see. You want to make sure that the wall is on the inside of your frame. On one side I did mess up and accidentally add it in between my two log pillars but I will go and change that. I then added another roof but this time most importantly it's sloping in a different direction to the first one. This gives it a disparity in shape and just makes it a little more pleasant to look at. It's sloping to the left upwards because I want to add a balcony on that side. I've talked about balance in the past but by having this large open wall space adding an attachment to it may look out of place normally but because of the slope it manages to balance it out correctly. So I'm just going to finish making the roof on this side just filling it in with the dark oak slabs. I haven't used spruce, I used a darker colour to give some contrast in the build. It does look fairly dull at the moment, but that's because we're going to be adding all the nature later on. I've also added some extra slabs to give it a bit of space. As I said, lots of straight lines make the build look very rigid. So let's move on to the other side where I said we were going to add that extension. We're going to make a balcony by adding some horizontal logs as a framework and have ourselves two layers of crops, utilising the space and our two-storey building. Adding some support underneath makes that log look like it's not just floating against physics. Of course, you could leave it if you prefer. So all we're going to do is fill the middle of these two logs with grass. Now, obviously, the size is up to you on how much farmland you want to make. You could make several layers of these, or you could just have the one. I should probably point out that these farms are not particularly functional. A lot of people in survival will most likely just make huge vast underground farms. These are more for aesthetic purposes. So if we look at the shack it's looking fairly good. We need to add some windows and some minor details before we delve into all of the natural builds. So a design that I use quite frequently, the trap door, the fence gate and some windows with some stained glass in them make up the majority of the windows. We're going to use the fence gate as our barrier a lot. It looks a lot nicer because it doesn't connect all the way and you could open it and leave at any point. So by using this it creates a nice 
fence effect overall and you use proper fence posts at the corner to make it all connect. We add lots and lots of windows because this shack is going to need plenty of light, although you probably won't be spending too much time indoors. You need to hoe all of the land that you want to grow crops on and add some water underneath. You could either have it flowing all the way through or you could cover it up with some slabs underneath. Let's add some more details before we go ahead and add all of the garden things. That is the last step and it ties everything together. So we need to add some more windows and plenty of trap doors on corners or at the end of the logs just to make it all come together as a build. And remember to put plenty of light where you need to grow your crops, but that's kind of a given. On the front, we're going to add a nice garden. There are two ways to go about it. You could simulate a mown lawn or garden with alternating colours of green stained clay. This might look really welcome in a modern design, but it doesn't really fit this rustic shack that we've got going on. It's just something to consider. I will favour all of the flowers and leaves and vines for this one, which may not look in place in a modern design. So to cover up that dirt, we're gonna add some slabs underneath our balcony just to tie it all together. And again, you may not want to have that water flowing. In the front garden, I've got a very specific pattern that I followed, although it is completely up to you how you do it. I alternated colors of tulips and left space for crops later on. On the balcony, I went straight for all crops and tulips again for the flower pots. And I've gotten ahead of myself here. I've gone and filled in lots of the crops without finishing the wall details. This is okay as long as you keep yourself consistent. It's up to you what shape windows you want to do, or what color, what details. It is entirely flexible. The idea is to take a very simple build and detail it in a way that makes it look pretty and have a lot of color and vibrancy despite being a very brown build. As you can see, on these two additional sides, I've added some leaves simulating overgrown vines. We're also going to add some actual vine blocks later on and also add some windows and some more flower pots, making sure I stay fairly consistent with the colors. I put the purple and pink together, the orange and red together, and the white and pink tulips together. I then went and bone mealed all of the crops because it was kind of annoying me that they weren't growing on my server. Of course, you would just normally wait. You can add as many segments to this garden as you want to make it spread from the shack. You don't even need to put a fence around it. You could alternatively put circular fences made out of cobblestone to make it look even more shaped and layered, but that's entirely up to you. I also added some grass just because I'm in a flat world. You could just bone meal the grass around you in your survival worlds to simulate the same thing. And as I normally do on a build in this style, I add some staircases to make it look a bit more weathered. On the back here, I'm going to add a different kind of garden that you don't normally see with builds. We're going to be building an orchard. Using some fence posts, a different color to the fences that you've currently used, and then adding plenty of leaves on the top of them can simulate a nice small olive garden or orchard or whatever you want to call it. Then adding some smaller flowers can bring it all nicely together. If you want to take that one step further, you can even get yourself some custom heads with apples, grapes, whatever kind of fruit you want, and stick it on those leaves to make it look like they're actually growing. Of course, it is entirely aesthetic and serves no functional purpose. On the back here, just finishing up my detailing by adding some back doors to get to the orchard at the back. The orchard is a really nice thing and you could increase it in size and shape and really take this idea further. On the top, I'm adding the signature chimney along with some smoke simulated by the cobwebs. And that is it. We've pretty much got our garden house completed now. I did take things a lot slower based on feedback that I've had before. A lot of people say that the videos are way too fast to copy. So if you are one of those people that prefers to copy builds instead of making your own, that's absolutely fine. But I have taken it a little bit slower today and hopefully that has helped you. 
on the whole, I think you can take the concept of making a very simple shape, accentuating the roof pattern, and adding lots of additional garden features making a house look really vibrant and at one with nature. You could do this with a modern style or an urban style, anything you want. I wanted to show you how you can take something simple and make it look really nice. Having said that, that is the end of the video, but I would like to know in the comments below what projects are you working on and are struggling with? What could I make a video on to help you with your Minecraft building? Do you want more general tips on how to improve things, or would you prefer something very, very specific? A mob farm decoration is something that I've seen quite frequently, I just need to know if that is the general consensus, or if there's something else that you really want to learn how to build. Thank you very much for watching everyone, goodbye!